right, we're back with another robot rating video. And this time, no intro, let's get straight into it. All right, this is Isaiah with a back roller bot, looks like. Good triangle liners. Down here looks like a bumper. Um, overall, pretty good build quality. I don't know if these sprockets on this side are for spacing. You know, I see sprockets on both sides, and I don't really think that's necessary. But if it's just for spacing, it's fine. I really encourage everyone to use these one by beams as spacing instead of last year because you know this year's rollers are really wide and the rubber band's gonna have a lot of tension. This is a really good brain placement back here and looks like a five to two drive so yeah H here. Uh this is another bot. Looks like full count of Magic Kid Conveyor Kata. Oh but this is a four motor drive. This is interesting. So again a five to two ratio, pretty good ratio for a light bot. I don't think Isaiah ever finished this bot actually, but yeah, this is was a really good idea. I do think these rubber bands could be changed for number 170 or 180. Um, overall, this bot is really good. Good tank placement and everything. But, you know, having a four motor drive on kind of bot like this seems really, really hard. And that's probably why he didn't finish it. But yeah, if it was finished, definitely an S tier. All right, Andrew was coming in here with a flywheel bot. Uh, pretty good build quality, but I think this is 25 to 1, right? I don't, I wouldn't really recommend using 25 to 1. And again, please don't use these triangular funnels at the front. Just extend the beam outwards and that'll act as your funnel because your rubber band rollers will keep it in the middle. Adding a funnel like this kind of just slows down the ball, especially when you're receiving passes. But yeah, pretty good. These liners are good, good tank placement. Uh, but I do think that you could definitely change these synthetic bands to silicone or even better uh 170 or 180 but yeah overall looks good uh i wouldn't recommend canteeing this uh bottom sprocket maybe add another beam on the outside to see it's a tier isaiah again uh, isaiah is carrying this time with his flywheel this looks like a really really old flywheel a complete whole count of china but yeah um i would recommend to add some aligners but yeah, this indexer looks pretty heavy. You could probably change that to just like a one by beam. Again, change your rubber band on the rollers and maybe add another beam in the front to act as a funnel. And then cut your shafts. Make sure you don't canteen them. This flywheel looks like really stable, right? So yeah, definitely an A tier. All right, we got Jacob. Looks like a conveyor flywheel bot. I think this is definitely a really good idea because you can have that speed of a flywheel but still have this um definitely add more bracing on your drive train and i don't think you really need such a big plate for just a normal flywheel you could definitely uh lower the amount of weight on this bot and so many braces on the conveyor is not really needed again don't use standoffs for high strength parts because standoffs bend really easily it's here all right sota with his back roller bot this looks like the decoupler Definitely, this build quality could definitely be improved. I mean, you could, instead of adding a standoff here, maybe add a beam and then connect the piston to that. Overall, this is okay, but don't have such a long chain. I could easily snap. I'm going to give that a D tier. All right, we got Carl with a friction test on, looks like, his back roller intake. That looks pretty good, but... Uh, I do see that even without some rubber bands, your sprockets are moving side to side. And that definitely is something that you should look into. Looks like a bent axle or maybe even a bent sprocket. And that's really not good. But this free spin is very good. B tier. Right, we got Syntax Error. Uh, this looks like a drivetrain PTO. So just looking at this, I can tell that it's really heavy. You don't need this many connectors just for basing. And you don't need all of this complexity. And I wouldn't recommend just directly chaining it. Chain does still have some slack and some friction to it. This PTO looks pretty good. I mean, there could definitely be some more support over here for these gears. A tier. And here's some more views. All right, this is an actual finished back roller. Um, don't use these funnels in the front. Again, just, just remove that. I mean, you already have a pretty long beam here. Um, yeah, looks okay. Don't canty this. I mean, this is a really, really long chain, and I can see that there's no slack at, on it at all. So, yeah, there might be some friction. So definitely add another beam, or you can literally just, like, make this beam longer. Um, This decoupler looks really, really heavy, so make sure to make that more simple. 
And on your intake here, it looks like you're directly chaining the sprockets, which is definitely not good because you have rubber bands on them. And yeah, definitely replace those rubber bands, but overall this is okay, I guess. Me too. This is the finished drivetrain PTO, I'm guessing. Again, you could definitely cut down some weight on here. I'll give it an A tier. All right, that's going to be all for today. See you guys.